One of the great problems that's occurred as a result of the false doctrine of futurism is that it's created a bunch of stupid, foolish virgins. Uh, because what that doctrine does is it makes you look outward for signs, just like during the time of Jesus. Jesus, show us a sign, show us a sign. And they always want him to do a magic trick to prove who he was. Today, uh, people are saying, well, these are the last days. Look at the signs. Look at the fires in the Northwest. Uh, look at Black Lives Matter. Uh, look at the pandemic. Look at how all the nations are wearing masks. This is certainly a sign of the end. Jesus is coming soon. The rapture can happen any minute. And everybody's looking outwardly at the world outside. And when Jesus talked about signs, he said this. He said, there'll be no sign given but the sign of Jonah. For just as uh, Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days, so shall the Son of Man be in the belly of the earth for three days. And of course, he was saying that before he died. And then he rose from the dead. And uh, he said, even if a guy comes back from the dead, they won't believe. And that's certainly true. But um, there were other signs that he talked about uh, subsequent. What he meant by that, right now, I'm not going to give you any other sign except point to this. But there are a lot of signs. And the most significant sign he brought forward in contrast to the signs that people tend to look at. There'll be wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, famines, disease. He say, the Lord's saying that because in between the time when he would uh, uh, be here in the, in the, in this, as son of man, there'd be a long period of time when all these things would happen within that. There'd be famines and earthquakes and diseases. All these things are happening. Uh, but that's not the end. That's not the end. So he was trying to swerve them away from looking at external signs and look to internal signs. The kingdom of heaven is within. And so the sign that he gives is this sign about uh, 10 virgins, five were wise, five were foolish. And that's the sign he talks about in, in, in contrast to the external signs that everybody's looking for. And then he says this, uh, will the son of man find faith when he returns? Now, there's a difference between creed and faith, okay? Well, creed has more to do with the, with the psyche or the soul. Our soul is our psyche or our, our mental grid work. Uh, spirit, which the, the scriptures differentiate from soul, is, our, is who we are. When Jesus died, he said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. So did Stephen when he was being stoned to death. Father, I commit you my spirit. Our spirit is who we are. It, it's differentiated from our soul. Soul being, and I think the right accurate way to explain it, is our intellect, our emotions, and our will. That's the soulish man. The spiritual man is a man of faith. And faith is not creed. There's a difference. Creed is more with the realm of psyche, our soul. Spirit is more within the context of how uh, our inner man operates in relationship with God or faith. Will the Son of Man fight, find faith? Not creed. God isn't looking for theology. He's looking for faith. He's looking for it. Will he find it? Can he be looking for it? Now, let me try to uh, explain the difference a little bit more because these virgins are a really good uh, thing to look at when it comes to understanding preparation for our destiny. Our destiny is to go into the stars. That, that the stars, the, the expanse, which is mentioned in Genesis, is the Father's house. In my Father's house are many mansions. For were not so, I would have told you. Those man mansions, uh, as we look up, are the galaxies and all these places in the heavens, which are trillions of places, uh, are where we are going to establish the heavens with the glory and righteousness of Christ throughout the universal construction. That's our destiny. There will be a heaven above the heavens. David alluded to it. But that's after we finish our mission into the, into the stars, which will be quite, quite an extended, if I can call it time, period of time. That's going to take a while. Uh, we were on that mission, and then it was interrupted by the war in the heavens. And because of that war, uh, you know, it, it, it ceased. Now we're waking up like the prodigal son in the pig pen, to who we are. And the preparation is really critical. And this sign that Jesus is talking about, five were wise and five were foolish, 
is really the sign that we should be paying attention to and not, you know, are we going to be over the pandemic soon? Are we going to get back to football? Uh, are, uh, you know, is this, is Trump the Antichrist? Is he, what's going to happen? You know, the coming of Christ could be way off yet. See, we only see as men, not as the sons of God. There's a big difference. Jesus said, uh, have not I said you are Elohim? He said, unless you wake up to this in Psalms 82, you will die as mere men. We're more than just mere men. We are, we are born from above. We're, we have a destiny into, into space and stars. And so this teaching here about five were wise and five were foolish is really what we should be focused on, not about the elections fundamentally, uh, but are we growing in the Holy Spirit? Now, the Mount of Transfiguration is a, was, a, was a promise and a preview of the kingdom of God coming down on Jesus but it was also an indication of what would come upon his disciples. And, and, and so uh, he said, the kingdom of heaven is with you and shall be in you. So obviously it had not yet come into them since it was a promise of that which would come. That promise came on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was given out of the tabernacle of God in the heavens to the earth. And Jesus had to go cleanse that tabernacle by his own blood, we know in Hebrews, because it was defiled by the war in the heavens. Now, after he cleansed it by his own blood, the heavenly tabernacle, now he can send the Holy Spirit to the earth. The Holy Spirit comes to the earth and comes upon uh, the disciples and then not only comes upon them, but is enters into them. Now, that entering into them is what I want to talk about uh, in light of the five were wise and five were foolish virgins. There's many people that have a mental idea of Jesus, but they're not spiritual Christians. They're just they're just natural, still functioning in the natural, because they haven't trans accumulated the Holy Spirit properly. So uh, the Spirit's upon them, but in terms of it being uh, rooted deeply in their inner person, uh, for most hasn't happened because that's called the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and that uh, issues forth in in a whole different reality than just mentalizing Jesus. Most Christians are mental Jesus uh, followers rather than spiritual Jesus followers. And that's the difference between the five that were wise and the five that were foolish. Notice they're all virgins, they're still saved, but there's a dimensionality of the spirit that's called the Holy Ghost. So we have the Holy Spirit coming upon us, but then there's the transaccumulation of the spirit which causes a ghosting, a white ghosting of Christ in us, the hope of glory. That's what we should be concerned with because that's the preparation that, pre that prepares us to go into space, to be representatives, ambassadors of Christ to the universe. And this world can't be fixed. Now, you can't fix this world through politics. It's not supposed to be fixed. And yet we have this idea, well, if we just get the right guy in there, we can fix the world or change the world. Well, God doesn't want to change the world. If he did, he would have eliminated slavery in the first century, uh, and he would have overthrown the Roman Empire in the first century. But he didn't come to do any of that. He came to introduce a whole new kingdom, and that kingdom is now. And that's what we should be concerned with more than anything, the kingdom now in me. So we need to see the Spirit develop in us this Holy Ghosting. So they have the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, same essence, but uh, the forming of Christ in us is what Paul was mostly concerned about when he wrote the book of Galatians. My little children, I labor for you that you be formed in Christ. These were people that believed in Jesus that he's saying he's concerned about because he's worried that Christ won't be Holy Ghosted in them. And the Holy Ghosting comes as we learn to go through the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and entering his courts with worship and praise. And there we connect with the altar of God and there's a trans accumulation. There's a sympathetic resonance that happens with the four living creatures within our spirit. And we begin to see differently. We begin to have a different view of things and we begin to grow uh, exponentially in Christ. So let's not be stupid virgins, foolish virgins, uh, just because we were saved, let's press on because the walk of Christ is a daily 
dying to the self, the outer self, the flesh. This is the outer self that affects our inner man. We need to grow in the righteousness of Christ, which isn't keeping laws and regulations. It's by faith we enter into that righteousness through the blood of Jesus. 